Okay world, uh, this is a video about how to remount a capacitor that uh, is the, not the same size as the original that used to be mounted up here. Um, so this is uh, one way I do it and uh, works out pretty well here. Uh, took a 2x4 and uh, split it down the middle, you know like a little 6 inch piece of 2x4 and uh, split it long ways. Uh, so you got like half a 2x4, um, siliconed it down, and then put some, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, plumber's tape. Uh, put a screw on each side of the 2x4 with the plumber's tape, and uh, so the little 2x4 block is siliconed down, uh, plumber's tape, and uh, that way it just fits right there nicely. And uh, use, a, use a piece of... Uh, um, pigtail cord, uh, 14 gauge, and um, wire it in here and put a Romex fitting right here so it secures real nice. And uh, that way it goes on real nice and uh, I used the ground wire here to keep the stress off the capacitor from pulling the wires. So the ground wire takes all the stress and the push-ons on the capacitor, that way they're uh, not being pulled on all the time. So, a little, little trick there, but uh, anyhow, this uh, seems to work out pretty well. This is my first time doing this uh, with this way. Uh, I just wanted to find a kind of a nice way to do this, and uh, I think I like this a lot. So, anyhow, uh, it took a little bit of time to do it, obviously, the first time, but uh, I'll know how to do it the next time quicker, so... But anyhow, this is a 1981L. It's the K-Body, uh, KWA2-0075, out of a dipping cabinet, uh, ice cream. Um, so three-quarter horse, 115 volt, and uh, put a new capacitor on it. Blew the capacitor, and I uh, put a new uh, potential relay on it because I replaced the capacitor once, and the capacitor blew in three days. So I'm like, ah, uh, potential relay is probably sticking. So uh, today I come back and put a new, another new capacitor on it and a new potential relay. And uh, like I said, this compressor is a little uh, KWA2 uh, 0075 on serial number 81L. That means it was made in December of 1981. So this thing this is 2013 now. Things 30 years, 30 going on 31 years old so it was probably installed in 82 yeah so 30 you know 32 years old 31 years old that's freaking old <laughs> for a compressor anyways uh, good life of a compressor is like 12 years running like this 24 hours a day seven days a week but the reason these things probably survive this long is because these dip cabinets run about 20 degrees below zero so your suction gas will be coming back real cool. Uh, should be if, as long as it doesn't get low, leaks and stuff. And uh, you should have real, you got real cold suction gas coming back, keeping your windings really cool. So that's probably the reason why these things survive so long. Key to uh, hermetic or semi-hermetic uh, compressors, yeah, hermetics or semi-hermetics, um, is keeping your suction gas cool coming back. If your suction gas is not coming back cool, the windings are going to toast. So, a little bit of information there. So, always keep them, uh, you know, always watch that suction gas temperature coming back. Okay, so uh, take care. I thought you guys would think this video is interesting. Um, hope you do. All right, thanks for watching. And I gotta get a new camera for close up. Hey, if any of you guys have a uh, good camera that does close ups, Please leave a comment down in the comment section and please give me the, uh, the name of the model number of the camera that you use for close ups. Because this Nikon, this is a Nikon Coolpix uh, S as in Sam 6300. Works good for like daylight outdoors and stuff, but uh, close ups, it's terrible. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching and. Um, like the video if you would hopefully you do uh thumb up for likes and uh 
Anyways, then uh, comment down on the bottom if you are so inclined. Uh, anyways, take care, y'all. Have a good one. Bye.